Good morning. Good morning. We do honor and praise God for our being here this morning. We want to thank each and every one that is here, the ones on the line. At this time, we're going to go and get open up. We're going to ask um, someone to give us a song and, and someone to give us prayer.
that is evil or cursed. Said for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him. So where God is, no evil can be. And, and then he says, uh, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be written in their forehead. And in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 states, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But in this instant, faith gives way to sight. We shall see him. As we like to sing the song many times, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. I know, I do. And so we, we live by sight now, but we will be, uh, we walk by sight and walk by faith and not by sight. But sight don't give way, and faith don't give way to sight. And he said, there'll be no night there. But can you imagine a place where there will be, you don't have no, don't have to have no kind of light whatsoever? That's, that's got to be an awesome place. And say, so you don't have no need for lamps. Don't have no need for the sun. For the Lord God will be their light. And just think about it. Here, you've got your light bill, your utility bill. There, you won't even know about that. Because there won't be none of it. Nobody will be there. God is there, and he lights up the whole world. The whole nation. So you don't have to worry about that. But here is a whole new ball camp. And it says that, he said that, uh, then the angel told me, said, uh, uh, told me, these, said the words I'm telling you, they are true, they are trustworthy, they are dependable, and they are accurate. Said so now, in every one of them, you take heed. And then, and then the God told me, God said, he said, the God who tells his angels what the future holds has sent his angel to tell you this will happen soon. And then the last verse he tells him, said, and tell them I'm on my way. Rest of those who believe and keep the words, the prophecy written in the book. Now some things that you, <clears throat> that you look at with, with John, <clears throat> you know, John would not go along with all this false stuff that was going on. Then the ruler of Rome wanted John to worship him. In fact, he wanted everybody to worship him. But he, since he couldn't break it down and everything, so that's when they sent him out to the hour of Patmos. But like I said in a previous lesson, he sent him out there for bad. But God had a plan all along. He has a way of looking out for his children. And... and, and so they sent John out there. And, and, and that was our, was some kind of political prison where they sent people who were disobedient to the king, who didn't want to follow the, you know, what was going on. But see, uh, John didn't do it. So they sent John out there. And, and some of the reading and research said that, you know, that was kind of like a, it was a hard penalty. Said it included being held in caves, hard labor, Maybe in a rock quarry and being held in the heavy chains. And, and they figured, they put Paul out there, he didn't have the sufficient clothing he needed. He wasn't going to get sufficient food. And they figured he'd soon die. Figured he'd soon be dead. But see, they, they gave him limited food and, and, and uh, water and expected him to soon die. But God had other plans. Just like he got other plans for us. Sometimes when the enemy think they got us back up in a corner, and we maybe we don't know which way to go, but then God steps in and let us know who they're dealing with. Amen. They're not really dealing with us, they're dealing with him, because we are his children. Amen. And since we are his children, whatever you do to us, you've done it to God. Right. And you have to answer for that. Right. And, and because it says that uh, another researcher did say, John, was one of the only disciples died of natural death at the age of 100 years old. Mm -hmm. All that they tried to do, it didn't work. And see, while John was out there, he was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's way. And he saw visions recorded in his book. And, and he, he gave us words of encouragement to carry on. And he tells us sometimes when life grips us up or tears us apart, 
We can count on God being there for us, with us. He will, he will either he'll take away the problem, he'll take us home, away from the problem, or he'll walk us through the problem. Amen. We don't know how he's going to do it. We would really rather he just take away the problem, but it doesn't always happen that way. Amen. Sometimes God let us stay in a situation so we can learn something too. And John described that water as clear as crystal, no contamination, no pollution, from the, because the source is the throne of God and of the Lamb. And so it just flows. It's rich, it's good water, and, and it's good for us. It, it, you know, it's even better than Lee Williams used to talk about that cooling water. Amen. It's better than the water you go to buy the bottle of water. Even the best bread of bottle of water. Mm -hmm. Nothing can compare with this. And then John says, uh, <clears throat> and he talk about the fresh crop. He says, uh, uh, and, and then know that each month is going to be a fresh crop. So, so, you know, that tells us that God's provision is always new and fresh and always more than adequate to meet our needs. You know, what a blessed hope. No more doctors, hospital, or drugstore. Amen. You don't have to worry about CVS and Walgreens. Amen. There was a time when Walgreens didn't sell all night, so you had to hurry up and go there and try mm. to get, and they would tell you that your prescription's ready, and you get there, and they act like they don't even know nothing about it. <laughs> and you say, well, you called and said it was ready, because I know the person you're talking to may not be the one that called you. But I'm saying they have a schedule where they call people, tell them to come in and get their prescription, and you get there, and it's like, I don't know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Then you have to wait. But just think, you ain't going to even eat these kind of people. You eat that fruit there, and you're going to stay here. Mm -hmm. You're going to stay here. And every month, you know you're going to have a new supply. We don't know what kind of fruit that is, or what kind of crop. He said a fresh crop, but we don't know what it is. But we know whatever it is, it's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be something that we can use. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's got to be good because it's coming from God. Amen. Amen. And to know that you don't have to be in the hospital no more, you don't have to be sick like you are now sometimes. Sometimes it gets kind of rough there. You know, the older you get, I think the worse it gets. Well, maybe not. Maybe it just get bad, period. But, the, oh, I do know that, you know, you think about the things you used to do, but you can't do them anymore. Amen. But then you learn to thank God for what he, for what you are able to do. Amen. And see, John tells us that, you know, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the great things John said, everybody in the ether, all will have equal access to everything. And you know, here on this side, only certain people got access to certain things. Mm -hmm. Depends on which side of the track you came off and how much you have and your status in the community or in the church or whatever. And, and you know, that's division between all of us. Even some families got division. But this here it depends on who you are, where you came from, who your folks were. That whether you, you know, succeed or whether you receive. But here it said, no matter which side of the river you live on, uh, uh, which there's tree on each side. So no matter which side you live on, you're going to have the same thing. Mm -hmm. I have the same thing the president has. We, we won't, nobody will be denied. Everything will be equal. And, and that equal access is, is a great thing. So, but, you know, all along we got to prepare for it right now. And then John, John encouraged us by giving us a little sneak preview of what, uh, what God has for us. His vision gives us comfort and God foretelling us what is coming. He helps us by saying, you know, this is what I saw in the vision. This is what God said would take place. All you got to do is just hang in there. And, and say, so, you know, uh, but we said, Faith give way. We walk by faith now and not by sight. And when we know that day, faith going to give way to sight because the, uh, we're going to see him face to face. That's what the scripture says. 
And you know, waiting on our new home and all the great things, it's kind of reminds you how most of us do when we're waiting on our retirement. Some folks say, you know, I'm going to work another three, four years, and I'll be 60, you know, I'll be 62, and I'm going to retire. And some say, no, I'm going to work longer because then I can get more benefits. But John is telling us, if we just hold out and keep the faith, we can have permanent retirement with great benefits. So uh, uh, the lesson encouraged us to be assured and know that heaven is a place of perfect fellowship, perfect protection, perfect provision, and perfect service. So we thank God all of that. And, and John is telling us that I know it's going to be hard. And we already seen that now. Those who are followers of Christ now you understand some things that perhaps the older people will talk about or some of the older songs that they sing about. You're living it. We're living it right now. Amen. And it's some tough times, and it ain't always financial. It ain't always physical. But there's a lot of going on in the, in the other, in the spiritual realm. There's a lot of things you say you just can't put your finger on. But there's a lot of stuff going on, and we have to deal with that. You can get up one morning, go to bed at night, and everything is all right. You get up the next morning, you're just troubled, and it seems like nobody, people won't leave you alone. They'll call you or whatever. I mean, you can just be troubled and don't know why. Sometimes you're troubled, and you just don't understand why you're troubled. And you say, you know, like David said, why am I this quiet So Why are you, in other words, why are you so stirred up so? Why are you acting like that? Why am I like this? And everything that you had before, you still have it. Your family's still there. You, you know, you ain't worried about not being able to buy something or something, but something in your spirit. When the enemy attacks your spirit, you just can't be satisfied. There's something about it that puts you, that puts you in a situation where you can't figure out what's going on with you. And, and you know, you look around and say, I ain't got no business acting like this. Look what God has done for me. I've been blessed and my family's blessed, all this stuff. Why am I acting like I'm acting? You know, why do I feel the way I feel? Sometimes you feel so troubled. You feel depressed. And, and, and you don't even know why. You don't even know why. But we, uh, we have to see when the devil can't attack us in one way, he always find another way to do it. But that's where we as followers of Christ, it's hard, very hard. But what we have to do, remember what John has said, and you think about some of the old saints of old. When we think about some of our ancestors, some of the stuff that they went through, you wonder how they made it. You just wonder, but by the grace of God, and that's how we're going to make it, mm -hmm. by the grace of God. Amen. Because Amen. God has done wonderful things for all of us. Amen. Yes. And, and he's not, I don't feel like he's through yet. But this is what John is talking about. When you see this, what John is saying in so many words, I wish you guys could see it. He's saying in so many words, I sure wish y'all could see what I see. But since you can't, let me tell you what I see. And then he told us about all the visions he had. Now, just think if he had gone to the Isle of Patmos, he might not have one of those visions because he might not got quiet enough for God to come in. Uh -huh. But being out there by himself and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> no big deal. And he came in, and then he, God gave him the vision to write all the books that he wrote, especially the Revelation. And that gives us something so that we can say, we got hope. You know, we're not just saying, well, we're going to stay here and we do what we do until. Going. No, we got hope. We got hope because we know any day we could leave you. But, but the thing about it, we have some place to go. A better place. So, you know, it, it's not as that bad when you know that you know the Lord. That's the only comfort you got in this world. Even if you got good family, which most of them we know that we do, that's, that's fine. But the thing about it is, if you don't know, if you know the Lord, 
Some people let everybody dead in their family but one person. But they, they are going along. They know the Lord. See, this is the thing about once they know the Lord, you just go. You have to give it all to him, and then you have to go on as if everything is all right, because it will be. It won't necessarily be like you ask or you want, but it'll be like God sees it. But John tells us, and like, y'all just keep, keep on trucking. So just, just keep on going along. Say, because if you hold out to the end, those who hold out, those are the ones he's prepared the house for, the one that's going to hold out until the end. Said, but don't turn around, don't turn back. I know it's gonna be hard, but you just hold out, hang right on in there. When it get hard, you just pray, and God, God will put more on you than you can bear. Although sometimes it seems rough. But uh, he said, uh, God won't put no more on you can bear. So John's telling us, just hold out, hold on out to the end. And he says, he's, press on, he said, even through heartache punishment and any harsh condition. He said, we just said, just press them. Because see, we're going to a better place where joy shall ever reign. Are there any comments? Yes, yes ma'am. Like we were saying, we, we got to walk in the, we got to clean up ourselves mm -hmm. and walk in the light and stay out of the dark. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I read in the Bible that God wanted to show He could talk to us face to face to face, and, and we need to be able to, you know, to talk to Him face to face because He ain't writing no nothing in ink and on paper no more. But He got already got it in His Word here mm -hmm. for us to read His Word and uh, get understanding about His Word and do the right thing and hold on to God, I'm changing hands. Right. And you see, when you said we'll see him face to face, because he'll be dwelling with us, according right. to John's uh, vision. Mm -hmm. He's going to dwell with us, so he'll, we'll, you know, we'll be there with him all the time. Right. And his presence, his appearance will be the light. That's right. Won't be the lamp. Won't, you know, and he said there'll be no night there. And you know, sometimes, sometimes when night comes, it's the night that's can be some bad times. Sometimes you can just toss and turn all night and start sleeping by the day, but when it's time to get up, you start sleeping. But there, it won't matter. That's there right. no night there. That's right. Are there any other comments? And I got Unless we realize we need to change, we keep going because we think we're right. So once we realize that we need to change, and, and if you notice, the closer you get to God, the more you see your fault. When you just kind of plan, you see everybody else's fault. You talk about them on church folks, go to church every Sunday and all that kind of stuff. But when you get closer to God, you see your fault. You don't even see nobody else's like you see yours. Right. You said, Lord, I've got to get this thing right. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. You've got to see it. And once you get close to God, you see yourself better. You see, you, you really do an examination of your own self. That's right. And when you find out you're wrong, if I, when I find out I'm wrong, I need to ask God to help me get straight so I can't be the same way again. That's right. And that's right. And that's right. And you don't need to be to a point that you Nobody can tell you anything, or you can't learn. Nobody can teach you anything. That's right. Because no matter who you are, there's something you can learn. That's right. So, do you have any other comments? I thank God for you this morning. I thank God for giving me that wonderful lesson to teach things this week. I just thank God for everything. 
thank you. You know, we, this is probably about the first time I think we had that many chapters in Revelation. So it's like it's giving us this for the time, for such a time as this. That's what I think. I think we're right for it, like the books we're talking about. Uh, although John, we're not talking to John personally, but I think what he laid out here, I think it's right where we are today. I don't think it'll get a whole lot better, but I think as we stay close to the Lord, we'll be able to work with you. How is that? Because if you don't have God, you don't have nothing to help you. You have nothing to lean on. That's right. And, and I know so many times you read the Bible and you say, but well, I, I just didn't understand. Some Bibles are kind of hard to understand. But I, I understand all that. So what I'm saying is that if you didn't get it the first time, read again. Read again. Hold it up. And, and you know, after that, you're going you're gonna to pick up on some things. Yeah. And we also got to ask God to give us uh, knowledge and wisdom and understanding about what we're going to give us. Yeah, and then we have to ask God. To so God, uh, if I'm supposed to do something, and then somebody else is doing something, let me pay attention. I'll learn something from them. Let me pay attention to what they're doing. Let me uh, let me support them because sooner or later you'll be in the same boat. You won't support them. So, if there aren't any other comments, this concludes our. I, I would just like to say, um, um. um Thank you for that message, and I don't need to echo all that has been said. I just want to let you know that uh, I appreciate the message. Look forward to it every Sunday, no matter what I'm doing. I might not make it to church or something, but I look forward to the message because it helps me um, throughout the week going to work and dealing with, you know, just um, like you said, it's, it's, it's a timely, I think it's timely mm -hmm. for the time we're in today. So I ain't there yet working on it. And you'll help me. Thank you. Well, just to know, as Song said, if I can help one person, if I travel all this way, then my living is not in vain. And somebody, somebody learns something from something I say, I'm happy. And, and I also want to add that uh, the pastor, uh, y'all see him in the background uh, uh, working hard because I'm going live. And um, I want to make sure that people hear what I'm hearing because uh, this is. Uh, I think Allison Chapel got the best Sunday school this side of the East. And I would say the world, but I, I don't want to even go there. But uh, I just want to thank you for all that you're doing. Thank Appreciate you. you. When I look at our Sunday school and Bible study, Bible study is very good on Wednesday night. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And so when you look at all of that, I think the Lord has really blessed us to have all this going at this time. Because who knows that God had left us here for such a time as this. Amen. Uh, and since you said that, I also want to add that I, will, I think our uh, Bible study on Wednesday night uh, fits the same category. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's very powerful. I think everybody needs to see it and hear it. I particularly enjoy Deacon May teaching the Old Testament. I don't know why it is about it. It seems like that's a thing for him. That's your thing, the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can teach the new one too. I understand that, but I guess I just got used to the teaching out of the Old Testament. I really like that. Thank you. So, if there aren't any, if there's nothing else, just conclude. Again, we would like to thank you, um, Trustee Booth. At this time, we will hear from the youth. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we didn't really go over lesson today. I went and practice. There are assignments for today, so that's what we did this morning. They went over their prayers and scripture and their um, announcements, and they're welcome this morning. Thank you. At this time, we have someone from the adult class.
At this time, we'll have our reading from our city of Secretary for today. Chapel at St. Stephen Sunday Church School on August 21st, 2022. Sunday School was called to order at 1012 by Deacon May. Opening song was It's Mighty Good by Lois Lewis. Prayer by Deacon May. Lesson topic was No Better Refreshment. Background passage Revelations 22 Revelation 22 1 through 7. Key verse, and he showed me a pure river of water of clear, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Revelations 22, 1. The lesson was reviewed for 28 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by a representative from the class. Attendance is 23 in-house, 7 online for a total of 30. Offering is $31.75. The weather is sunny and warm. All offices remain the same. City Secretary Lois Lewis. Are there any corrections? Thank you. Again, we want to thank you, uh, Mother Lewis, for sitting in, for filling in for this morning. At this time, we're going to all, that's all to say, we're going to close out with a word. Amen. 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 Amen.